I think re-signing Ryan Tannehill is absolutely the correct decision, and I just think it makes sense for the Tennessee Titans. I think Ryan Tannehill proved last season he's a really good player, and I do think that getting him on a contract, it's going to be four years. It's $118 million total, so that's uh, 29.5 on average per year. There's $91 million total guarantees, 62 of which are fully guaranteed. Uh, it, you know, it's a huge deal. It definitely is, just shy of $30 million a year, but I don't hate this move. I really don't. I mean, the Tennessee Titans are now in a position where they can, at the very least, franchise tag Derrick Henry, and they can compete next year, and I don't know if they could if they let Tannehill walk. You know, I sort of floated out the idea on my podcast about maybe have uh, Teddy Bridgewater come in, you sign him, you get him for less money, but I really like Ryan Tannehill. And I think Ryan Tannehill is going to live up to this contract. I just do. Of course, now that he has a big contract, he's going to become like Kirk Cousins, where now all of a sudden people are going to uh, basically just blame him if anything goes wrong whatsoever. That's just kind of the nature of the sport. But keep in mind, you know, quarterback contracts are going to go up every year because the cap goes up every year. I mean, all contracts are going to be higher each year. The Tennessee Titans did have $63 million in cap space, so, you know, yes, you're losing a decent amount about that, but you can still get Derrick Henry and have some money left over. So, I think that this move just makes sense for Titans because I think Ryan Tannehill is very good. And why do I think Tannehill is very good? Well, I'll get into it. We'll start things off with this play because I do think it has to be mentioned that, without a doubt, Ryan Tannehill benefited from the fact that Largely, Tennessee would run a lot of play action. I mean, they would, and he definitely benefited from it. This play is a good example of it, where it's going to be a cover three zone, and so they're going to run play action, and then have a receiver run over the linebackers like that. This way, the linebackers move in, because it's play action, they're trying to make sure they stop the run. Then Tannehill can simply just throw over them and try to get a completion. And so, after the ball is snapped, you know, with Derrick Henry, with that big threat, you see the New Orleans Saints are so ready for a potential run, and because of this, Ryan Tannehill has plenty of room to throw over them. I mean, he basically has a receiver wide open, but also give Tannehill credit, he makes a very good throw that allows his receiver to be able to make the catch and be able to run over and actually get a touchdown out of it, because he put it in a perfect spot where you don't have to adjust to the ball in any way, you can make the catch while running to pick up as many yards as possible. I think that's a good play of showing Tannehill's skill set in the sense that, yes, he benefited from the Tennessee style offense, I think there's no argument about that, but at the same time, I do think that he did a very good job of really thriving in that offense as well, and he did some good things. It wasn't just the offense was good for him. Like, what I mean is a play like this, where it's pretty much the exact same type of type idea, where what's going to happen is that, once again, it's a cover three zone for the Saints, so for the Titans, they run play action, have a receiver running over the middle, but what's interesting here is that there's also another route right over there that can also get open against cover three zone. Tannehill's first read is still going to be the receiver running over the middle, but what you're going to see right after the ball is snapped is that New Orleans does a very good job of getting back and closing up that gap. You know, they were not fooled on a play action. So this now means that for Tannehill, he can't throw it in that direction. But he says, you know what, that's fine. I'm going to move over to my second read. And my second read is over there. And this receiver is open. So Tannehill then fires it in that direction and they're able to get a pretty big completion. So again, he just understood the situation. He thrived in that moment where usually you want to throw it over the middle. Sometimes that doesn't work, but if it doesn't, then say, hey, no problem. I'm still going to try to find a way to make this work, and that's what he did. He got off to his second read very quickly, made a very good throw, and they were able to get a completion. I also think it's worth mentioning that he just did a good job of giving his players opportunities. Like, on a play like this, it's this is actually in the playoff game against the Ravens, where what's going to happen is that it's a cover one blitz that Baltimore is in, and that's going to be the route that he wants to hit. It's going to get into the end zone. This is definitely a route that can work. It can get open. So that's why Tannehill is looking in that direction. And after the ball is snapped, you notice that Jonu Smith, he's kind of open. You know, he has an opportunity to make this play. But Tannehill is kind of going to say, you know what? I am going to take this chance right here. I just basically trust my guy. This is a third down and 12. I don't want to throw the ball away here. I'm just going to give you an opportunity. This would be a very tough play to get an interception on if you're a defender because your back is turned. So 
it's definitely worth the risk right here. Tannehill is going to fire it in that direction, and it ends up being a completion for a touchdown. Sure, it was an incredible play, no doubt about it. It was just a great catch, but at the same time, the only reason it could be a great catch was because Tannehill gave his receiver a chance. He gave Smith a chance, and Smith rewarded him with a touchdown. A lot of guys are afraid to make this type of throw, but you know what? You have to be willing to make this type of throw sometimes, and Tannehill is, which is one of the reasons why I like him as a quarterback. I do feel like, you know, for Tannehill, kind of the story of Tannehill has always been he's such a great athlete, but doesn't have the highest football IQ, and also can't stay healthy. That's kind of always been his struggle. That's what he struggled with in Miami. But here in Tennessee, it seems like he's finally sort of getting his groove back. And, you know... This play is another example of that where he's kind of getting smarter. You know, he's getting older, getting more intelligent when it comes to football. On this play, it's going to be man coverage, and they're going to run a little pick play right over there. And if you look at Vernon Hargraves, for example, he's totally noticing what's going on. He's saying, hey, guys, you know, this is going to be a pick play. Let's switch right now. Let's say that I'm actually going to cover the guy who runs closest to the sideline, and then whoever's second closest, you're going to cover the guy second closest to the sideline. It makes sense, actually, you know, good job by Hargraves of reading this play, but at the same time, you have to make sure that both guys are aware because his teammate has not yet realized that Hargraves wants to switch. So right after the ball is snapped, you're going to see basically Hargraves just get completely ran over for one thing. But then what you're also going to see is that there is now a wide open Tennessee player. So, you know, this play obviously worked out very well for Tennessee, but there's also one other thing you're going to notice, and it's that the ball is in the air right now. Tannehill has already thrown it. Tannehill was dead on, which is what resulted in a touchdown, just a good job by Tannehill of very quickly realizing what's going on, making the correct read, making the correct play. And, you know, he's already so athletic. If he can get the football IQ part down and he can stay healthy, I mean, look out. This could be, I mean, this could just be a great move to have Ryan Tannehill on your team. So now I've already talked a lot about what I like about Ryan Tannehill. And, you know, there's a lot I like about him. I think he's a good player. Uh, you know, I like this move. But, at the same time, I, I just, I do have to say there are some flaws in his game. He still will make the occasional bad decision. He just will. He is, he has not fully come around on that football IQ part. He's come a long way for sure, but he still will make some bad decisions. And even one of those was in the playoff game against New England, where it's going to be a cover one linebacker blitz right now, and he's going to run play action. And actually, that's the route that he's going to look at, which makes a ton of sense. I mean, on paper, this is the route he should look at. It, Like, as you see, it's going to break away, which means that the receiver could be able to beat his own one-on-one -on -one matchup with that cut. And also, with it cutting towards the sideline, the safety might not be able to run over and be able to make the play. However, with the blitz and the play action, New England is going to be able to generate pressure to Ryan Tannehill very quickly. So, he wants to hit that receiver, but Quite frankly, he just doesn't have the time to do it right now. He could try to throw a floater up there, but again, keep in mind, there is a safety who's deep. So that's very dangerous to just throw one up there where a safety can get a quick read on the ball. However, Tannehill's going to try that anyways, off balance, just throwing one up there and it gets intercepted. Just not a great decision by Ryan Tannehill, and it's one that he probably should not be doing. That's honestly my biggest flaw in Tannehill's game is the fact that he will make those poor decisions from time to time but that being said I do really like Tannehill I think he got really a bad rap in Miami I think people forget this guy did take an Adam Gase led team to the playoffs before getting injured and missing the games in the playoffs I mean the injury thing is definitely still a concern even though he was healthy in all the games he played in 2019 something I would still be worried about and you know hopefully his football IQ will continue to improve heading into 2020 but that being said, I mean, I still do really like Tannehill as a player. And again, it's just one of those things where he's such a good athlete. I think that even if he just stays where he's at right now, he's still a very valuable guy to have on your team. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on this entire move and Ryan Tannehill. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.